Now this next vodcast is going to talk about hybridization. It's an odd kind of concept, so don't worry. This will be your first introduction to it. I'm just checking to make sure that when I look at my records that you've watched the vodcast and you've gotten your first introduction to it. Now what atoms can do if they have a will or a personality is sometimes they can mix together in a process called hybridization. And just like a horse and a donkey can breed and create a sterile hybrid called the mule, you can get orbitals, atomic orbitals, to blend and create orbitals that have different shapes and different energies, and we call those hybrid orbitals. Hybrid orbitals will have different shapes and different energies than their original parents that they came from. Now, how they mix together and how you name them, that's pretty easy to understand. It's the driving force or why they hybridize that's the part that we'll go over again in class. So let's take a look at the what and the how. The number of hybrid orbitals that you mix together, or sorry, the number of original orbitals that you mix together will create the same number of hybrid orbitals. And the reason why atoms do this is they're going to provide new bonding opportunities where none might have existed before. So here's our first example. Our first example is you can take an S orbital, spherical, and blend it with a P orbital, that's the dumbbell shape or kind of bow tie shape, and you make two, so one plus one makes two hybrid orbitals, and those hybrid orbitals, you just combine the letters of the original parents you put together, so we call them SP. So one S and one P can blend to make two of these lopsided sp hybrid orbitals. And what I'd really like you to focus on is, look at the picture on the far right, it's this giant bow tie looking thing is the orbital here laid on top of the orbital there, and the small little unequal lobe of each of those orbitals is hidden in the other one's cloud. So this picture is are these two hybrid orbitals laid on top of each other. Now let's take a look at that picture. Couldn't you, <clears throat> if you thought about it, and pretended that this was an atom in the center, now it's got its left hand out waiting to bond to somebody else, its right hand out waiting to bond to somebody else, and let's take a moment and look at that shape. If you put an atom here, and you put another atom there, and they were overlapping their clouds with this atom here, you'd have a linear geometry. So the way you can make linear molecules is through sp hybridization. 1s, 1p makes two sp hybrid orbitals. Now I will cover this again, but let's take a look at beryllium. If beryllium is drawn with an orbital diagram, the only way atoms can overlap their orbitals is if they have a half-filled orbital that you don't see in this picture here. It's got some empty p orbitals and some completely full 1 and 2s orbitals. So I don't have any half-filled orbitals in beryllium. But beryllium goes, you know, I'm smart. I can figure this out. It does this thing first where it promotes. So this is the before picture. This is the after. One of these electrons that used to be at the second level in the shape of a, a sphere temporarily gets kicked up to a higher sublevel, the dumbbell p orbital at the second energy level. Now you can see we have two half filled orbitals, but we're not done yet, that's just the first step. When you have <clears throat> an S and a P blend, you make SP hybrids. Here is the picture of the sp hybrid orbitals. Notice that they're half filled, and now another atom could come up and buddy up to that half filled electron cloud, and another atom could blend and buddy up to this half filled electron cloud. So when you have hybridization, <clears throat> you create a new shape of orbital that's higher energy than the parents it came from, lower energy though than say a normal p orbital <clears throat> and they have different cloud shapes. This particular picture doesn't show the energy but trust me in a worksheet that we will do together in class I will cover that with you. So sp orbitals are higher energy than an s 
lower than a p, and physically what that means is that they are farther from the nucleus. Now, I'm not sure if this will play. I didn't think it would. So we'll pick up on any vo uh, videos uh, that can't be covered in the vodcast in class. So if you can have sp hybrid orbitals, what if you took 1s and 2ps? So just like the name sounds, 1 plus 2, you would make 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals. And when you lay those guys down on top of each other, you'll see the picture of what that looks like. It creates a place for an atom in the center to bond to three atoms around it in something like a trigonal planar geometry. So sp2 hybridization looks like this lovely picture here. Here's my s and my two p's. They hybridize. They create three lopsided looking sp2 hybrid orbitals. So both the amount of hybrid orbitals and the name are easy to determine. Now in your mind's eye, take each one of those little purple guys and lay them on top of each other. And now you'll recognize, hey, that could be an atom here in the center that's got one, two, three places for three other atoms to come and overlap clouds in a trigonal planar molecular geometry. This shows a little bit better how the promotion and then hybridization process takes place. Notice that this is boron's orbital diagram. They kind of cheated a little, and over here on the left-hand side, they didn't show the 1s orbital or sublevel, but that doesn't matter. It's not part of our process. If boron goes, hmm, I want to bond to three other atoms coming up next to me, but bummer, I only have one half-filled orbital, I got to get smart and kick one of these 2s or electrons up to a higher sublevel. So here's the before. Here it is after that electron that used to be a 2s got kicked up to the 2p. Now we're not done yet though. It's at this point that an s electron and 2p electrons, that means two, not the second le energy level, but you have two of them, they'll blend and create those hybrid orbitals that are called sp2. Now we have three of them that are half filled all at this new energy sublevel, higher than the original s but lower than the original p and boron could take on an atom here, here, and here who would come and overlap their electron clouds. So this is the hybridization process which would create linear, excuse me, uh, trigonal planar. Now, I won't even try to play that. Two more, I think. So if an S and a P make SP hybrids, if an S and two P make SP2, then, oh yeah, I can make three new, or four new hybrid orbitals if I combine three P's with one S. So an S and three P's, one plus three equals four, that will make four of those lopsided sp3 hybrid orbitals. We're going to merge all those guys together, and what you will see is that you could have a tetrahedral molecule form. Let's take a look at a picture of that. Or not. One more try. Let's go this way. Lovely. So back to our PowerPoint. I'm not going to go back and start this over. Here's a picture of what's happening. An s orbital can blend with three p orbitals to make four of these lopsided guys. These four sp3 hybrid orbitals join together and create this funky looking thing here. Now, pretending that that's an atom in the center who has one, two, three, four possible orbital clouds sticking out from it, now you could bring an atom here, 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 and here, and have them merge and create a covalent bond. And the shape of that molecule, as you can see, is a tetrahedral. Four-sided, three sides to the pyramid, and then you have a base. Don't get confused, though, with these black dots on the diagram. This black dot here, I guess, would represent, on uh, not drawn to scale, the nucleus of the atom that's extending out these clouds. 
these black dots that you can see here are representing possibly the location of an electron, I think. Not a big deal. Okay, so sp3 hybridization would create a place for four atoms to bond. So you have in your notebook a worksheet that shows how could methane, CH4, form. It also might be embedded in your PowerPoint. Either place is fine. Carbon only has six electrons. And when you draw the orbital diagram for carbon, badly formatted by the way, <laughs> you can see, because these two electrons are supposed to be in this slot, those two are fine. And there's supposed to be three lines here showing that you only have two half-filled orbitals. Just focus here. So if carbon says, I want to make some methane so the nice kids in the chem lab can have a Bunsen burner fuel, that's the natural gas that comes out. I can't bond with four things right now because I only have two half-filled orbitals. So what we're going to do to make this work is hybridize. The 2s and 2p orbitals on the carbon will overlap and hybridize. And if you're going to overlap and form a hybrid, the name of the hybrid is called sp3. It's going to take 1s orbital, one sphere, and blend it with 3p orbitals. So, of course, if you have an s and 3p's, you have four new identical orbitals that have different energies from their parents and different shapes. This is a much better formatted picture. Here is carbon before. Now we've drawn this orbital diagram with it being closer to the bottom of the paper signifying being lower energy closer to the nucleus. Carbon only has two possible bonding sites that are half full. It's got to figure out a way to create four. So four hydrogens can buddy up next to it. Here's the process. It hybridizes, check it out, it'll promote that S electron that you see right here, promote it up, and then blend them together. And if you look carefully at your handout, you will find that the hybrid orbitals are farther from the bottom of the paper than this 2S sublevel, but nearer to the bottom of the paper than the two Ps. And it would look like this. One, two, three, four, half-filled sp3 orbitals have been formed, providing four places for hybridization, sorry, for bonding to occur and for the creation of a tetrahedral molecule. Kind of a cool process. Just on a side note, methane is a very important one of the um, climate change gases. Um, Methane has a much more dramatic impact, I believe, than CO2. And as our Earth begins to warm and large areas up in the tundra begin to thaw out and permafrost is thawing out, huge amounts of methane are expected to be released. In some places, you can even throw out a match and watch your formerly frozen tundra catch on fire and explode in front of your eyes. Okay, on that happy note then, let's summarize with hybrid orbitals. Remember, they're orbitals of equal energy when two or more orbitals on the same atom combine, and the driving force is to provide new bonding sites. We will pick up with our last topic, electronegativity and polarity, at the next podcast. Until then, if some of this information was confusing, not to worry, we will definitely cover it again in class.